day he's going to say, you know, when 2008 hit, I got demolished. You know, that's why my, my credit stinks. I got foreclosed on. It was just a bad time. But I don't think that that happened to you. So, I mean, I, I guess I'm looking for a couple specific, maybe you have some examples, some stories of what did you do or people you know different than uh, that, that other people didn't do during that period of time that they got crushed and you didn't? I, I listened. I watched. Okay. My next door neighbor in San Diego. What a loser. He refinanced his house. Uh, I think at least four or five times, the, the genius bank gave him 20% 20% over his market, over the market value for his house. His credit cards were all maxed out. He was still buying new cars and living, taking vacations and everything. And I said to myself, this has got to end sooner or later. Where is all this money coming? Who's and I and I just when things are too good to be true, when the whole when everybody is the whole herd is moving one way. Maybe this is my personality or something. I just step step back and say, you know, maybe it's time to be a little bit more conservative right now. Let's get rid of some of the properties. Okay, let's keep the good ones. Let's watch. Uh, let's watch the income to debt ratio. Let's watch the liabilities. I'll tell you right now, I own my mortgages are free and clear on my houses. Okay, I have zero debt on. I have all. They keep sending me all these credit cards. Look at all this stuff. <laughs> Zero on all of this. It's common sense, okay? Read the tea leaves. Read, read what's going on in the world and, and just apply. Com we have an absence of common sense in our society, okay? Great entrepreneurs see two moves ahead, like in chess. They look ahead. What's going to happen? I know one thing. Nothing. A good economy, it's not going to last forever, and a bad economy is eventually going to turn around. It's, it, it's a pendulum that swings back and forth, are you Gumby? Can you are you flexible enough to adapt to different things that happen in the world, in your world? I mean, you know, you, you, you're um, you're saying this as somebody who has figured this out over time. But a lot of people come to the table; they're just getting now. Also, the you're talking about the masses. The masses right now, I think, more than ever, we can thank a lot of our guru friends for this. Friends. The don't get me, don't start houses. me on guru. Don't start me on gurus because you know where this conversation no, is going to go. But you saying, know my opinion on gurus. The, but, but I'm but I'm what I'm saying is that the interest in flipping houses is 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 higher than it ever has been in this country. Sure. Um, so the mass is like are going that direction. They're trying to do rehabbing and flipping and wholesaling. So what you were just saying is. If you see where where everybody is going, maybe then it's it's going to hit a peak and you go in a different direction. So, no, with that in mind, right now, what would you advise somebody? How how to how to view that? How to view the fact that there's just too many people that are trying to get into flipping houses right now? How could I be a real estate investor going forward, regardless of what Donald Trump does, and and be immune to all that? Just because there's a lot of people in real estate doesn't mean they're successful. I think. Can I, can I tell the truth on this uh, interview, or should I lie a little? <laughs> truth always, brother. Okay. The, the thing about it is, I think a great deal of people, high in the 90s, from these gurus and these programs fail after spending a great deal of hard work and effort, and uh, they're not getting the right tools uh, to succeed in this business. This is a sales-centric business. This is about market. I love my competition, by the way, because they're stuck in 1968. They're still telling people to use the post office, for God's sakes. Okay? If I go to an audience and I say, how many people went to the post office this week, last week, this month? I'll get a few hands. I'll say, how many people have an iPhone with them today that they used at least 25 times? The whole damn audience raises their hands. So, the, you know, the thing about it is, Real estate is um, it's the greatest business in the world, but very few people have the sk are learning the skills out there to be successful in it. Okay, they're getting motivation and no perspiration. They're getting the get rich quick uh, uh, stories. You know, they're getting people to say, "Hey, give me five thousand dollars and walk on hot coals." And God, you're going to make all the money in the world because you accomp you walked on hot coals and ended up in the hospital with second degree burns. But the thing about it is. We, they, there are some people who understand supply and demand, marketing and sales. And it doesn't, have, it doesn't matter if it's used cars, life insurance, Amway shampoo, or real estate. They're going to make money because they understand how to, they understand America. They understand capitalism. They understand buying and selling, supply and demand. They get it. And they, they're, they're learning from the right people, the right, the right tools. 
on how to sell, how to market, how to buy right. They're getting the right information. They're not just getting motivation from some. The trouble is too many people are just getting motivation. They're spending a lot of money. They're learning 1968 sales techniques and marketing. And then when they go out in the real world, they fail. That's my competition. I love them. So if I'm reading between the lines here, um, I thought I was pretty straightforward there. <laughs> no, no, you are. I'm going a little deeper, and I want to come back to that. You are being very straightforward. I'm, I'm, I'm trying.